thank you to the speakers, uh, to the organisers for letting me speak today. Um, I'm going to be talking today about aerial photographs, um, crop marks and movements, so much smaller movements than I spoke about um, last year. So an aerial photograph is a static image. A static image of an archaeological site in the ground, or in the case of crop marks, of mar marks and crops influenced by buried archaeological features. It's static and unmoving, or is it? Today I want to consider the journey of the oblique aerial photograph taken for archaeological purposes. I'll particularly consider images of archaeological sites recorded as crop marks, and we'll focus on oblique aerial images taken from light aircraft that I'm sure that many of us are used to working with. Almost, although most aerial photographs taken today are now in digital format, I'll think first about the way in which we, we use print photographs. Now the reason for that is that the vast majority of the time that we've been taking photographs from the air for archaeological purposes, we've been using film and hard copy images. It's only within something like the last 10 to 15 years or so that we've seen a complete switch to digital. That means that the greater volume of the aerial archive is made up of print photographs, or at least originated as such. Because of time and the kind of work that I'm involved in, which is relatively low tech, I'll not touch on things such as 3D processing of aerial images. Instead, I'll focus on the simple transformation of oblique aerial images, specifically of crop mark sites, and the interpretation of archaeological features from them. So uh, with that all in place, let me start again. This session is about archaeological movements, and I said at the start that aerial photographs are static images. We even usually use them at rest, at the desk or, or on the computer screen. So why have I chosen to talk about aerial photos today? Well, um, I believe that movement is implicated in aerial photographs from the, their use from be beginning to end. Aerial photographs are taken in motion and engaged with a movement. And the bodily engagements and movements have the potential to affect the way in which we use and interpret aerial photographs and the crop marked archaeological features they record, and thereby affect the creation of the archaeological record. So let me explain. Aerial photographs are images taken in motion. They're taken from a light aircraft in flight at, a, at perhaps around 2,000 feet through an open window as the aircraft circles a site. The camera is focused on the features in the ground and the shutter pressed. With the pressing of the shutter, the photo is taken and movement is paused. So the very second at which a crop mark site enters the archaeological record is a split second of, mo of movement, of motion, paused. Of all the objects we use in archaeology, of all the sources of information, aerial photographs must be one of those for which movement is most a part. And with the pressing of the shutter, that movement is transformed into a static image. But although the images themselves are stationary, we can often retrace the motion of the aircraft by looking at a sequence of aerial photographs taken from the air. By bringing together together um, the aerial photographs in the sequence that they were taken, we can recreate the circling of the aircraft or the flight line as the aircraft passes a site. Such sequences of aerial photographs provide us with punctuated movement, a hint at the motion inherent within these paused images, the motion that was a part of them at the very moment of their creation. And that movement remains important in the interpretation and understanding of features on the ground. Changing light, angle and perspective as the aircraft passes around or by crop mark features in particular can reveal different features or aspects of a site. A different angle can reveal a key feature, or the light at a particular point highlights something that was not visible or easy to see a few seconds earlier. So different photographs taken seconds apart can reveal different aspects of sites and give different insights into its nature and form. So this punctuated movement, traceable through a sequence of static images, can often be critical to understanding and interpreting a site. From the camera, the aerial image enters the archive, either as negatives and print images or as a series of digital images. As I said earlier, uh, despite the fact our images are now taken as, as digital, um, the major part of the existing aerial archive is in print form. In Scotland, uh, most of the bleak aerial photographs taken by the former Royal Commission have now been scanned and are available as digital images on HES's Canmore website. But the original, uh, the original form is hard copy, and I'm certainly more used to engaging with them as hard copy images. Now, such images may rest a while in the archive before they're used, in some cases for many years before they're taken into the hands of the archaeologist, studied and used. And a new movement continues. Aerial photographs are taken from the archive, tipped this way and that, interpreted, sifted and selected. 
Photographs themselves may be taken through a, through a complex series of movements in the, in the hand as we seek to see and make sense of the archaeological features and sites recorded on them, and as we select images to further examine and interpret. Then these print images are moved onto the scanner and onto the screen. This is a transformation, a movement, if you like, from hard copy to digital. The images are then taken into the rectification software where images are transformed into a plan view. The software stretches and twists the images to fit the map. The image itself is moved and transformed, and in effect it's shifted from, into another type of object. This is an important step, as it allows us to see a true representation of the form and shape of archaeological features. It can often alter our perception of those features, sometimes apparently changing their shape and form, giving new insights and ultimately allowing us to measure, map and document these sites as accurately as possible. It can be a key movement in understanding a site, a movement that should happen for us to understand crop mark sites more fully, but it doesn't always take place. Now, the next step in the journey is interpretation and mapping. Now, interpretation has taken place at more or less every step, but here I mean the solidification of that interpretation into mapped features, the tracing of those features on the screen. This may take place uh, while sitting at, at the desk, but the movement here is both of the print aerial photograph in the hand when it's available, and the tracing of the archaeological features on the screen. When I'm uh, interpreting an aerial photograph and, and, and um, mapping the, photograph, the images from an aerial photograph, when I have a print aerial photograph to hand, I'm switching between different print photographs, tipping them this way and that, twist, turning and twisting them in my hand, bringing them closer to my eye, looking closely through a magnifying glass, looking at them in a, from a distance as I seek to see features, interpret and relate to what I see on screen. In effect, I'm going through a very complex uh, series of movements in the hand. At the same time, as I'm, I'm switching between these aerial photographs, tipping them this way and that, looking at them in different ways and at different angles, at the same time, I'm tracing uh, features uh, with my hand on the screen using the mouse or digitising tablet, moving the cursor across the screen, tracing and thinking. This, inter this is interpretation in motion, thoughts on the screen. <coughs> Interpretations are made as the photograph is twisted in the hand. Decisions and interpretations are developed, made and then solidified with the movement of the cursor on the screen. Those decisions and interpretations are laid down in movement. This is thinking through the body and bodily movement. They may be smaller movements that we might consider in other contexts, but this movement and bodily engagement nonetheless. And the final product, those mapped features represent archaeological interpretations solidified movement made solid. So what are the implications of those, these movements? How do they affect the creation of the archaeological record? Well, I think that movement matters both large and small. The quote here from Ting Ingold, which is, if perception is thus a function of movement, then what we perceive must, at least in part, depend on how we move, refers to the movement of walking. But I think the principle remains even when movements are smaller. And that's something that's brought out by Nan Shepherd, who I, I love, which is why I put in a quote from her. So if you've not read Nan Shepherd, I suggest that you do. It's very good. Um, but um, Nan uh, talks of, writes about walking in the Cairngorms, so not specifically about the small movements I'm talking about. But she also draws out the fact that just by altering the way in which you're looking at something, it can change your, your, your perception. So by, by turning your head around, by standing upside down, um, you can, it changes the perception, your perception, the way in which you see the world around you. So I think movement matters at all uh, sizes and shapes. So to return to the, to the um, aerial photographs, um, from the flight of the aircraft to the movement and transformation of the aerial photograph, so, sorry, from the flight of the aircraft to the movement and transformation of the aerial photograph, the twisting and turning of the photo in the hand or on the screen, to the way we choose to trace features on the screen, these are embodied engagements, and they're not neutral actions. They affect how and what we see, perceive and interpret. They affect how we interact with the material culture of our archaeological record, how we understand and make sense of that record, and ultimately what that, the record that we make public looks like. The movement of the aircraft influences what is recorded and what becomes known. That paused and punctuated movement forms the basis of the archaeological record. Movement influences the way in which we perceive things. As I tip the aerial photo this way and that, it changes my perception. 
changes how I'm seeing and potentially alters my interpretation of the record that I create. And that movement is often necessary to really grasp the nature and character of a site revealed as crop marks. The rectification, the transformation of an oblique image to a plan view is a fundamental movement. It alters the very basis from which we make our interpretations and affects both our perception of the aerial photos and the archaeological features they record, as well as the way in which we interact with the aerial image. As I trace features on the screen, my hand and brain work together to lay down my interpretations, to make decisions about what I'm seeing and about how to depict it in solid form. This is a complex process. It's not just that my brain tells my hand how to move, it's in the movement of tracing features and exploring them in this way that interpretations are realised, refined and finalised. It's in the very movement of the aerial photo in the hand and the digitisation on the screen that the site or monument becomes known. Known more fully to the person looking at the aerial photo, mapping the features and creating the record, and potentially known to, the, to a wider audience as that interpretation is solidified into a plan, into a ready format for dissemination and communication. Ultimately, such movements influence the archaeological record that's created. We can't completely separate bodily engagement and interpretation. We think through the body and bodily movement even when, when dealing with such seemingly static material, even when apparently just sitting at a desk. And what about digital engagements? What about digital aerial photo photography when we no longer have the print aerial photo to hold and move? Do we see in a different way? On one level, very little has changed with the advent of digital. We just miss out on that step and scanning the print to get it onto the screen. We can still examine the image on the screen, enlarge it and turn it in different ways. Even with an image on the screen, I find that I replicate some of the movements I would undertake when examining a print aerial photo. I turn my head to look at it from a different angle, examine it closely and from afar. But if the way we move influences perception, then in other ways much has changed. We miss out on that movement in the hand. It's not so easy to twist, turn and tip a photo on the screen as it is with one in the hand. So we potentially see and perceive in a different way. We can't engage with a digital image on a computer screen in exactly the same way as a print image. At least I don't think so. So this, does this change what we see, how we interpret, and ultimately the construction of the archaeological record? Perhaps. Perhaps we're seeing differently with digital uses. So perhaps there's a loss, a cost, but with digital processing techniques and things such as 3D modelling, we surely also gain something. We can engage and move in different ways, potentially seeing and interpreting in different and new ways, potentially seeing different things. So maybe the cost is worth it, and maybe we also gain something, but maybe we're also losing something without even realising it. So let me draw this together. I've argued that the oblique aerial photographs we use for archaeological purposes are not static images at all. Created in movement, movement is a part of their use and interpretation. The archaeological features we see and trace are interpreted and made in motion. It's often the act of tracing a feature that interpretations are made and altered. That act of tracing a feature forces us to make definite choices, makes us think in different ways than we might have might have done were we just to make an interpretation just from a photo in the hand or on the screen. The interpretation, interpretive plans and mapping of crop mark features we create reflect the solidification of movement and affect the solidification of archaeological interpretation. This doesn't mean those interpretations can't be questioned or altered, but in my experience it becomes more difficult to question a solid plan or mapping that can often appear definitive. So all these movements I've talked about ultimately influence the archaeological record that we create. Thinking about the movement from print to digital, does this mean that digital images and the way in which we interact with them influence a different kind of archaeological record than would otherwise have been created? Perhaps it does. This may be subtle and small, but do we see different features than would otherwise be the case? Do we miss elements that we might otherwise have picked up on? Do we perceive and think about the, archae about the archaeological features differently? All of these are worth reflecting on as ultimately we create the, that archaeological record and whether we acknowledge it or not, we have a huge part to play, play in what that record looks like. We are part, ultimately, we are part of the archaeological record that we help to create. Thank you.